today I am. Well, I don't know if you can see it, just over the massive mound of shingle, that's Dungeness Power Station, as you can tell. And I am right, right round behind the power station. I've never, ever fished this far round. I am a good 500 yards around the back. And I don't know, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm um, sort of quietly confident. I, I really am quietly confident. I'm gonna try and fish for maybe some odd summer visitors that come in. Maybe if there's some bream around, I don't know. Um, don't know if you get trigger fish here or anything a bit odd. So I'm gonna basically fish a, a flapper rig with salted mackerel bait on and then I'm gonna put a squid out. And I'm gonna put a squid out of range. I'm not gonna go close in for bass. I'll put a squid out of range to see whether any contact are about. Um, it's September now, which is a good month. Um, not that any any month has been that good over the last few years, but um, we'll give it a go. So that's what I'm going to do. Big bait out at distance, and then uh, flap a rig with little mackerel strips or little bits of ragworm as far as I can get it. So let's get set up and let's get out. Right, I want to get a bait out. I want to get a bait out pretty soon. Now, so what I'm going to do is get the little rod out first. I've got some big ragworm. What I'm going to use it first is the crappy ones. Let's get rid of them. What I'm going to do on the needle here. These are a pain sometimes getting that head to pop through the needle. I need to sharpen this needle. So. Here we go. I'm going to put half a ragworm on each hook. And what I've just done, well, I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to put half a ragworm on, and then I'm going to tip it with a tiny bit of salted mackerel. And I'm making a tiny bit of salted mackerel. Right, so what I'm going to do is thread this round. I'm gonna get that head to pop over the knot. I think I'm gonna to have to just put a little bit more on there, actually, yeah. The hooks are slightly bigger than I thought. That's okay, I'm gonna get another one. Bring that down. Number two going on, like that. And then I'm just gonna tip these with a tiny little flag of salted mackerel. Just gonna double over the thin end of the mackerel. There we go. So that's what I've got. I've got ragworm, a bit of mackerel on the ends. I'm gonna do the same on this one. Right, so I'll quickly show you what I'm gonna put out first and then I'm gonna set the other rod. So the rod on the left is not set up yet and that's the big rod, but this is my Sonic Gravity HT, my trusted HT. I love this rod, I take it everywhere. It's got a Shimano Ultegra 14,000 on it. That's got about nine kilo braid on it and a 32 kilo Synetic Skyline leader. Then that goes up, we follow the rod all the way to the tip there and it comes down and it is clipped there to a two hook boom rig, two hook boom rig. There's a H in hook, isn't there? I'm not that common. Um, and there we go, you've just seen me bait it up. We've got mackerel, well, we've got rag tipped with mackerel on size one O's. And that's on a 150 at the moment. I'm gonna see if that holds. So what I'm gonna do is get that out now and then I can set the other rod up. Right, so here we go with the next bait, the big bait. So what I'm gonna try and do is make this squid a lot smaller, but make it look like a whole squid. So I'm gonna possibly take it off there like that. It's still a bit frozen, I've got a head here. So what I'm gonna do is then half the uh, tentacles on the head. I'll try and 
try and just defrost this a little bit. I'm gonna tuck the head in there like so. And whilst that's in my hand, slightly frozen, which helps, I'm gonna try and bait elastic that head to the top end of the body that I've got. Like so. Now, what I've put on is a one hook pulley on this rod. And that's, basically that's what I've got. That's what I want. I'm gonna come through the bait there, put it right through. Like so. I'm then gonna try and hook both. I'm gonna hook the body, go through to the other section of head on the inside. I'll pull that round, grabbing both with the point, like so. Laying that flat, pull that tight, and that's what I want. I want a one hook sitting out the bait like so. I'm gonna bait elastic that on to keep it secured. Now there is a bit of um, right to left out there. I might have to put a a 170 on my other rod. It seems to have settled at about 11 o'clock, half 10. And there we go. I really wouldn't worry too much about too much um, bait elastic. You want that line to be bait elastic all the way to the end of the bait as best as you can otherwise it's only going to cause tangles or potentially cause tangles there we have it there we have it we have a well, it looks like a whole squid, doesn't it? But it's not. But that'll do. I'm going to get that out now. I'm just going to give this an overhead thumb. I'll show you what I've got it on. And then we'll get it out. So, look at that. The rods just switched. I've changed them over because the other one's pulling. And I've got a heavier weight on this one. So, what I have got on this red and black rod, which is in any fish anywhere, six and bait. I've got another Shimano. 14,000 Altegra. That's got a 30 pound braid on it, so 15 kilo. And then go up the rod, just show off my rod. There we go. We go up the rod and come down from the tip there. We come down to a pulley rig. We have got a pulley rig this end, a one hook pulley rig, and you've just seen me bait that up. That has got a shortened squid on it single hook see if we can get something to engulf that bait out of distance be nice won't it so let's get that out now and i've got 170 on this i always put a slightly heavier weight on a, a heavier bait because of you've got drag from the sea the currents you've also got to uh, counterbalance that the weight of the bait um to try and get a decent cast and keep the bait hooked up and clipped up so if I was to go with like a 150, 140 on that, there's a chance that the weight of the bait might actually work against the clip and come up with it a lot easier. So that's why I go with a heavier bait, uh, weight on a bigger bait. Um, but I'm gonna have to go slightly bigger on my other rod as the tide is pulling. But for now, it's okay. Anyway, let's get this squid out.
Well, I've had a couple of knocks on the big rod, but I'm going to bring the little one in. I'm not happy. I'm going to change the rig on this. I'm really not happy with this one. Oh, could be snagged as well. Let's have a look. Oh, we got it moving. All right, let's get this in. Change this rig. But I'm keeping an eye on the big rod because I've had a couple of proper bangs on it. But only like one big bang, and that's it. Let's see what's happening. I'm also keeping an eye on the sea to see if it starts boiling with mackerel because I've got my little tie water spinning rod. I'll get some feathers on very quickly and see if I can get some. Yeah, that's stripped. That is stripped. I am changing this rig. I have gone a lot smaller. I'm going a loop rig and I'm doing a loop rig with size fours there. So I'm going to put a little bit of mac um, ragworm on this for now. See what's about. See if there's any soul around. Don't know. Um, let's just get this out. The other one was stripped. So unless it's crabs, there might be some fish about. So change your rig, change your tactic. Let's see if I can find what they are. So what I'm doing is putting two tiny ragworm on and I've got two that have just died. Now, I'm not worried about that. They've only just died. There's a slight bit of movement on them. So they're still fresh. They're not, they're not gone over. So they're still gonna catch me fish if there's fish there. Um, I tend to try and use these rubbish ones first, then go on to the good bait. Um, if there is rubbish ones in my pack. Obviously, if they died and they started to go mushy, I throw them away. But these are still quite firm to touch. So they're still in good nick. They just recently killed over. So I'm gonna put these on first. This is a very light rig, loot rig. I'm gonna clip this up, get this out. Again, it's going to be quiet. It's going to be quiet. Oh no! Look at that! Amazing! Well, we know we're at Dungeness. There we go. A surgical glove. Let's put that in the rubbish. First time I've caught one of them. Right, so I've put the ragworm on. And I'm just going to tip it off with a couple of bits of uh, octopus tentacle. They're small enough. And just keep that worm on the hook in case that's getting it pulled off too easy. Oh, happy with that. Now what we do, this one's getting pulled in in a minute, so we'll flip him over there. He can sit there. Let's get this tight. Is all I've got left of that bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a squid and mackerel wrap on this and I'm going to put it at 20 yards. Get towards high tide. Let's see if there are any bass about. On this, stuff two pieces of mackerel down this. Let's pull out some of the innards. Not too much of them though, I want a bit of 
juice scent. Watch out for a rod. Two bits of mackerel down there, like so. Bait elastic that together. Lovely. He will get kept in place by the hook. I'm still gonna try and elastic him. Again, I'm gonna thread the hook through the mackerel at the top. Just pinch the squid, put it right through. And I'm gonna go through the back of the squid body, basically thread it up the connecting part, what you would call the neck. into the head, out where the tentacles are, where the mouth is. Pull that all tight. I've still got the bait elastic here. So I'll push that all down like so. Keep that in place with my hand. Start bait elastic in that up. And there we go, we have got a mackerel. Well, squid stuffed with mackerel on the on the line there. That's going to go in close on this pulley rig. That'll be flapping around in close. There's a bit of water movement under there. Hopefully, a big bass will come along and take that. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Let's get that out now. 20 yards. That's what I'm going to put it. 20 yards. So, clip him out. Don't need to. Don't need to clip that up. We are going. How good is that? Nah, about 10 yards, 15 yards. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Right, I hope you can see in front of me there is the good old trusty three hook flapper. Now, everyone should have one of these in their box. It's not a rig that I go to first, it never is, but I'm struggling to find fish at the moment, so that is what's going out. Fiat flapper, ragworm, tip with squid. Um, a good simplistic rig and bait. Let's hope we can find something. So let's get this out now. Right, just an overhead thump with this. I don't want to go too far. That's 60 yards. Out. So, at the moment, there is not a thing happening. It is dead. I've walked up there, spoke to the chaps. Nothing. Um, Mark, a uh, chap from YouTube, he's just turned up. He's sitting up next to me. Um, hopefully, something will happen, but we're now over an hour of the tide ebbing it's a lovely day it's sunny which we have not had a lot of this year so i'm enjoying the sun i'm lounging back in my chair enjoying the sun enjoying the day enjoying the wildlife with the turns a few gannets flying across um just hoping that i get that one bite but at the moment it's not looking that promising Might have a fish eel or a snag coming. I think that's weed that's clipped that. Yeah, it's weed clipped that. Oh no! Oh, I don't know. It was bouncing, it just come on. No, there's something there. Something there. There is something here. Oh. Oh. We might have a fish. Finally. Got bass, maybe. Oh, there's something there. Oh, I'm on so weak. Snooze, there's a decent bass here. We've got a good bass. We have got a good bass. Come yeah, on. I'm on so light snooze on this. 
Don't do this to me. Come on, in you come. Yeah! There's a good bass there. He's a keeper. We have a bass. That's that a do. That's worth it. That's, That's worth it. it. That's That's worth it, mate. Right. There we go, nice bass. Right, there we are, bass, after juggling it for the last three or four minutes. I've got it, it's in my hand. I'm just gonna stick him on the tape measure, see what he uh, measures, but I think he's a keeper. Um, lovely, been waiting around a long time for this. Um, he sort of dislodged the weight and then it was thumping a little bit. So I'm happy with that. Let's get him, uh, let's get him uh, measured, see what he measures, and then we get a photo. Right, so we're rebaited again, rebaited with rag tip with squid on the free at flapper. The old faithful has done the job. It's managed to snag me a bass when not a lot is happening at all. So I'm very happy with that. So again, I'm just going to go out where it was. It was about 60 yards. It wasn't a big cast, it was just a overhead bump. So I'm happy with that. Let's see if we can snag something else. last cast has been done what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring the big, big rod, rod in first give the little rod can't get my words out give the little rod a little bit extra time see if I do get a bite on that but I think I'm pretty much done it's been hard going here today I haven't seen the only fish I've seen come out was the two gentlemen that were up there that I went to speak to they had one bass early on at about half nine and that was it and he came and saw my bass and he said his was a bit smaller than that so might have been just over a pound so I've had a bass, there was a bass there, I haven't seen anyone else catch anything, a lot of people have gone. I mean, it's a lovely day, but it makes fishing quite hard in these conditions, clear, clear water, not a lot of chop. But it's enjoyable being out, just being out, doing something. So, I'm gonna check these rods now, bring them in. And if there isn't anything on them, this is gonna be it. So, uh, I'll say tight lines for now. 